Hey everybody, it's Wednesday. I'm Matthew Laria. You're watching the Faith for Life broadcast. Let's pray and release faith over today's broadcast, and then we're going to get right into the Word. Father, we do thank you again today, Lord, for your Word. Lord, we ask you today for revelation of your Word. We ask you today for grace and help to receive it, to put it into practice, and to see it work in our lives. And we do thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, all this week on the broadcast, we're doing a series of teachings entitled, Casting All Your Care Upon Him. Now, I'm going to go back over to 1 Peter chapter 5, and let's look there again, starting in verse 6. It says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon Him, for he cares for you. Now, I also want to go over to Matthew chapter 6, and I want to look there at verse 25. And Jesus said this, he said, Take no thought for your life. Now, that word thought there in the Greek means care. And so you could read it like this, Take no care for your life. Now, friend, to cast your care on the Lord, or to not cast your care on the Lord, is a choice. You know, in these verses, God is talking to you. God is talking to me. When he said, cast all your care upon him. When Jesus said, take no thought for your life, take no care for your life, he's talking to us. And so it's our choice whether or not we take the care it's our choice whether or not we cast the care. And with every care that comes to you, you only have two options. You can either take it or you can cast it upon the Lord. And you do one of those two things with every care that comes to you. And with every care that comes to you, you have to make a choice of what you're going to do with that care. Am I going to take this care and, and worry and fret and be upset? Or am I going to cast this care over onto the Lord? I have to make a choice. What will I do with this care that's laying before me? And here's the thing. God will not make you cast your care upon him. He won't make you do it. And here's another thing. He will not do it for you. He will not take cares from you that you don't cast on him. And here's the good news. The devil can't make you take a care. Come on, it's your choice what you're going to do with it. In fact, let's imagine for a moment that this note card I have, let's imagine that this is a care. Let's just say it's a care about something going on at, at our church, North Smoke Church. Join us Sunday mornings, 10 a.m., praise the Lord. <laughs> um, let's say that this is a care about the church, and this care hits my desk right here. I have to make a choice of what I'm going to do with this. I got to either choose to, to say, I'm going to cast this over on the Lord. I'm going to get this off of my desk, or I can choose to take it and let this set on my desk. But I have to make a choice with every care that comes to me. And to take the care or to cast the care is a choice. And so here's the thing. Anybody who is worried, who is anxious, who's troubled about anything, chose to take the care when they didn't have to. Come on, I want to say it to you again. Anyone who is worried, who is anxious, or who is troubled about anything ever, chose to take the care when they didn't have to. Friend, if you're watching the broadcast today and, and you're overtaken with worry and anxiety about something. Here's the reason why. It's because you made a choice to take the care and you didn't have to. And the same goes for me. If I'm worried and I'm not, but if I was worried or anxious or about something today, it would be because I chose to take the care and I didn't have to. You know, in Matthew chapter 14, 
in verse 30, when, Jesus, when Peter fell down into the water, Jesus said this to him. He said, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? The scripture said when Peter saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. Come on, he took the care, didn't he? And Jesus said this to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And then in Mark 440, with the disciples, they were on the boat with Jesus when a, a storm hit. That was when Jesus said, peace be still and stop the storm. And Jesus said this to him, he said, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? They took the care that night of their lives and of their safety. And I want to read you those two verses because Jesus is correcting the disciples and correcting Peter about their fear and about taking the care. And he didn't leave us with the idea that they couldn't help it. He didn't say, oh, guys, you know, this is a big storm. You couldn't help but be worried in this situation. He didn't say that to Peter. Well, Peter, I know you got afraid, but man, it's dark out here. And, you know, we're out here on the ocean and, and we're walking on the water. And, and you've never walked on the water for, before. I understand why you're afraid. That's not what Jesus said. And the reason he didn't say that is, is because these took the care and they didn't have to. They didn't have to take the care for their lives that night when the storm hit. They could have cast the care on the Lord. Peter didn't have to take the care that night when he was walking on the water. He could have cast it over on the Lord. And so Jesus wasn't leaving them with the idea that they couldn't help it but to worry. And why is that? Because to take the care or to cast the care is a choice. And they chose to take the care when they didn't have to. Now, there's some other people in the Bible that, cho that chose to cast the care and not take the care. Come on, how about David when he's facing Goliath and he gets down there in front of him and see sees that he's two times his size? And come on, don't you think that fear was trying to come all over him? But David didn't take the care. Come on, how about the three Hebrews when they were getting ready to be thrown into the fiery furnace? Could they have worried? Could they have been upset? Come on, could they have yielded to the care and to the anxiety? Certainly they could have, but they didn't take the care. And how about Jairus when he got a report that his daughter was dead when he was with Jesus and they were heading back to his house to pray for his daughter. He got a report that his daughter was dead and they told him, don't, don't bother Jesus anymore. Come on, he could have taken the care. He could have yielded to the anxiety, but he didn't. He chose to fear not and to believe only. Now I said that to you to say this, that group of people could have taken the care and worried and didn't. And so to take the care or to cast the care, it's a choice. And anyone who is worried or anxious or upset, and I'm including myself, anybody that is worried, anxious, or upset about anything chose to take the care when they didn't have to. And friend, you don't have to worry and take the care even in an extreme situation. The situation doesn't dictate whether or not you take the care and worry. You do. I do. And in any situation, come on, in any situation, we can cast our care on the Lord. We can trust God. We can walk and live by faith and enjoy the peace of the Lord and the joy of the Lord. And we never have to take the care about anything ever. It's good news, isn't it? Now, I want to go over to John chapter 14, and let's look at a verse over there, John chapter 14, and we are going to look at verse 1 there. John 14, verse 1, and so you can help it, I can help it, whether or not we take the care and worry. We, we can help it. Why am I saying that? Because many people would have you to believe that they can't help it. Well, I can't help it that I'm worried. I can't help it that I'm upset. And they will emphatically tell you that they can't help it. And they will even say, and if you were in my shoes, you would be worried too. Why? Because we can't help it. We're just, you know, victims of worry. Well, friend, anybody who is worried has taken the care when they didn't have to. And you can help it whether or not you take the care. And you can help it whether or not you worry. Now, you can't help it whether or not worried thoughts come to you. 
You can't help it whether or not feelings of anxiety try to come to you, but you don't have to yield to any of those thoughts. You don't have to yield to any of those feelings. Come on, you can stand against worry. You don't have to take the care. Come on, say it with me, friend. I don't have to take the care. Say this with me. I'm not a victim of worry. I can help it whether or not I take the care and worry. And yes, you can, friend. You can help it. Jesus said this in John 14, 1. He said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God and believe in me also. And then in verse 27, he said, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Some other translations of that verse are say this, don't let your heart be agitated. The word troubled actually means inward commotion or to be anxious or to grieve or to be sorrowful. And what's Jesus saying? He's saying, don't let your heart be this way. Now, he just got through telling them that he was going to leave and go to the Father and they were going to be without him. And when they heard that Jesus is leaving and he's no longer going to be with us, they started to get anxious. They started to worry. They started to get upset and they started to be troubled. And Jesus' response to that and to them was stop it. Stop worrying. Stop being troubled. Come on, friend. How about if you uh, came down to church one Sunday and after Sunday, after the service is over, you started talking to me and you started telling me, look, Matt, I'm so worried about my kids and, and I'm just worried about my oldest son. You know, he's, he's running around and I just don't know where he is and I'm just so worried and, and I don't know what's going to happen. What if after you got done talking, I looked back at you and said, well, stop worrying. Stop it. Stop being anxious. Stop being troubled. <laughs> come on, would you come back to church the next Sunday? That's what Jesus did to them. They, they, they started to feel anxious. They started to feel upset because he was leaving. And Jesus said, stop it. Now, two questions. Are, is it that simple? And is it really a choice? Is it really that simple? And is it really just a choice that they can just go, okay, well, we're going to stop worrying. We're going to roll the care of this over on the Lord and we're going to trust him. And the answer is yes, it is that simple and it is a choice and you have authority over worry, over care, over anxiety, and you can choose to stop it. You can choose to stop it in its tracks. Now, the enemy has deceived many into believing that it's not that simple. It's not that simple. I can't just stop it. I can't just stop worrying. I can't just stop being anxious. Well, if you believe you can't just stop being anxious, then you believe something different than what Jesus said, because he said, don't let your heart be troubled. Don't let it be afraid. Don't, don't fret. Don't be upset. Come on. It's, it's that simple and it's a choice. It starts just like that. You say, okay, well, I'm not going to worry about my kids anymore. It's this simple. I'm going to cast the care of my kids over onto the Lord. And when worry and care try to come to me, I'm not going to take the care and I'm not going to yield to the worry. It's my choice. I don't have to take the care. I don't have to worry. It's a choice. And it is this simple. Come on, don't make it more complicated than it is. It is this simple and it is a choice. You know, in 1 Samuel chapter 1, Hannah was overtaken with anxiety and sorrow and she was, um, and it was going on year after year and it was severe anxiety and severe sorrow. And, and the man of God came to her and said, look, go in peace and the Lord will grant your petition to you. And as soon as he said that, she did. The scripture says she went in peace. I'm sorry, it says she was no more sad. Is it that simple that it can be so severe so heavy upon you, and you can just say, well, on the authority of the Word of God, I'm not going to worry about this anymore. I'm not going to take the care about this anymore. It is that simple, and you have to make a choice. And if you will, you can walk free from it. Now, you can't stop the thoughts and feelings of, of anxiety and worry from coming again, but you never have to yield. And on the authority of the words of Jesus, 
in John 14, 1 and John 14, 27, you can take worry and anxiety and you can grab it by the neck and you can put it in the ground. You do not have to live under the thumb of cares, worry, and anxiety. You have authority from the Word of God and authority in the name of Jesus to walk in victory over it in Jesus' name. Now, as we're closing today's broadcast, I want to remind you of these three things. Number one, to take the care or to not take the care is a choice. Number two, anyone, anyone, you, me, who is worried, anxious, or troubled chose to take the care when they didn't have to. And number three, you can help it. Whether or not you worry and take the care, you have authority over worry, over fear, over cares, over anxiety. Let's pray. Father, Lord, we thank you today that we don't have to take the care about anything ever. We don't have to worry. We don't have to fret. We don't have to get upset. It's our choice whether or not we take the care. And for us and for our house, we choose to cast all our cares over onto you because we know that you care for us. And Father, we do thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Friend, thank you so much for watching today's broadcast. And don't forget to come back tomorrow for Thursday's edition of our Faith for Life broadcast. And we're going to continue this series entitled Casting All Your Care Upon Him. We'll see you then.